and Kyle told me it dele- they deleted it the next day. So it was up on and whether, whatever their open source system was. It was up. They deleted it the next day after that was done. Um, but this isn't new. I mean, this is hap- like Ruby Ridge is a good example. Yeah, you got the- Ruby Ridge. By the way, is seen as a success by the FBI, which is crazy, which is fucking bananas. Tell, got- tell, tell people if they don't know what Ruby Ridge was. Tell yes. them the, the story behind it. So Randy Weaver, a Green Beret from Vietnam, shacks up in uh, rural Idaho, and he decides that he wants to have a life off grid. And the FBI, um, doing an investigation with the a- ATF, finds out that he has some kind of gun issue and they need to do an investigation and they need to go on site. But here's, this is almost, it's crazy because there's similarities with our situation. You find out the guy's background. Like if you're developing a target packet on a bad guy, you would want to know the guy's background, right? That's the first thing you do because you want to assess potential risk to force and you want to mitigate risk overall. What's his background? Green Beret, Vietnam. Oh fuck. Right. Then everybody gets all fucking crazy, right? They start going, oh, we need to find out more. So they do, they do surveillance. They don't just do off-site surveillance. They don't do long-range surveillance. They get in ghillie suits and low crawl to his fucking cabin, right, in ghillie suits. His son and his dog uh, are out on the property because it's his fucking property, and they discover these guys in ghillie suits. The son raises his rifle, shoots and kills one of the uh, FBI guys, and the FBI guys kill his son. So what would you do if you own property in rural anywhere in America you hear gunshots and your fucking son's dead and you don't know what's going on. And it's a bunch of dudes in ghillie suits. So he winds up locking himself and barricading himself in the cabin. And then they deploy uh, the FBI hostage rescue team, HRT. I actually interviewed one of the guys that was at, in, he was in the sniper site um, as a sniper for FBI HRT when this went down. So um, long story short, they kill his wife as well. Shoot his wife. While she was holding a baby. While she was holding a baby. They think, I talk, talking to the, one of the snipers, they thought that um, he was charging them um, into their position, but he was fake charging. Like he was like, he was making like a gesture like he was charging. So they got panicky and they started breaking shots off at him. They, I don't know if they wounded him, maybe he wounded him, but he gets, in, he gets back inside. And so they dump the next person they saw, which happened to be the wife. So uh, they end up, barricading the place even more and his ex-commander is the one that basically does a call out and gets him to negotiate and then eventually gets him to surrender so all this is said and done the fbi is found in the wrong they sue the fbi they win it's a it's an insanely controversial topic but if you look at the fbi two of the success i mean there was guys who got awards from the fbi on that fucking mission like even though it was proven that they were in even, the wrong yeah even though it's proven they were in the wrong like waco is a good example of it as well but this is what I'm talking about. Like, there's a there's a breakdown between organizations and the government and their powers that be, and and likely a cascade, a tipping point of mistakes that cascaded into the catastrophe that it was. But that's the problem. I mean, we're seeing those things now. Like, what I do with my business in a free society is none of your fucking business. So if you if you are the director of the FBI and you know agents are probing into people's lives who happen to be veterans, happen to be minorities, like fit all your shit, and they're fucked up. Those dudes need to be fired, and you need to make a statement to the public, letting them know, hey, we're not fucking around here. 